Hey everybody, it's Lord Magicus, and we're gonna play Marfolk in Modern. So yeah, it's been a while since we touched Modern. Um, so Modern, yeah, has had a lot of changes to it uh, in the you know past month or so. We saw like Bant Snow has become like a really really popular deck. There's Uro all over the place in that deck, and it, I think it's kind of replaced like Blue White Control is now like a Bant mid range control sort of deck. It's not quite mid-range, and it's not like quite a full control deck. It hides somewhere in the middle there, but Uro has really taken the place of Oko in those kind of decks, I think. So they get to still play with stuff like Astrolabe and uh, Ice Fang Coatl. But now they're playing like Uro as their their primary like win condition, since yeah, you know, they don't really have like Celestial Colonnade or much like that anymore. But yeah, that deck has become really popular and. Another another deck that's like also taken hold recently is this like red green Ponza deck, where it's not really as much Ponza as it was before, but now it's more of like a red green kind of uh, ramp deck. It has stuff like Glorybringer. We've played against it a few times, so there there's a fair bit more um, diversity, I guess you could say, amongst modern right now. I'm pretty sure like. I don't I don't know if there's any deck that's like above like six or seven percent of the metagame at the moment, so maybe that's a good thing. Like in, I I'm not sure how I feel about that yet, but I don't think that necessarily just, you know, m lots of decks being popular is necessarily a sign a, a definitive sign that a format is good, but a lot of people feel that it is, so I'm sure that there are a lot of people that uh, that really like the format is it is right now. I mean, I think I still have some fundamental problems with it, but for, at least if you look at like the deck diversity, I think that at least you can say that metric is pretty good. Um, yeah, that even like Jund has like adopted some new cards into it. Like Croxa has been really popular. Um, it's, yeah, it's been interesting. So. Uh, let's see, there's been like Tron and Eldrazi Tron, I think, have also been kind of popular at the moment. So there, there's a lot going on. Um, I, the the biggest change I think is like Burn, like Burn and like Mono Red Prowess. I think are actually pretty good at the moment. So a lot of people have been advocating like let's let's go back to Master Waves. Like if we're having trouble against the red decks, like what better card could we want against red than Master Waves? And you know what? That's fair, and I think because uh, you know decks like Jund are you know removing main deck plague engineers for stuff like Croxa, like they might only have like two plague engineers in the sideboard. So when engineer goes away, this card becomes more playable. So it's definitely not good against stuff like Ballista or Engineer, but against stuff you know like like the Burn deck, it's insanely good. So we want this to, against you know, um. Or the the red green ramp deck, like I was saying, because it's it's a threat that they cannot just like glory bring her away, and even if they blood moon us, um, it's still something we can very easily cast. It only requires one actual blue source, so you know you can be stuck with like two muta vaults, like a castle vantress and an island, and you can still actually like cast a threat that your opponent may not be able to deal with. So it's kind of nice in that regard, but it just stabilizing against the red deck is also very important with this. So. Um, we are going to play Mono Blue, and that's also partially because if you, I think if you're going to play Master Ways because you're worried about Red Deck, I think the Mono Blue deck takes less damage from its mana base, so it's it kind of you know is is working along with the same um, plan here of let's not lose to stuff like Lightning Bolts if we can help it. Simic is going to be probably a little bit better against stuff like Eldrazi Tron. But Mono Blue is going to be better against stuff like the red decks. And other than that, like, I removed the main deck Dismembers for this because it's the same thing. Like, you really don't want Dismember against their, like, Burn or Mono... Well, I mean, I guess sometimes against Prowess you want it, but it's not great. Like, I think in most cases you'd rather see this card against those two, so... Yeah, that's it. It's you. You get a more consistent mana base too. Like the other big draw to this is, unlike Simic against the the red green ramp deck, 
having like, you know, 10 to 12 basic islands in your deck means you're not actually that vulnerable to Magus in the Moon, which is hugely important because Simic usually only plays like four basic islands in it, and you can actually get shut out of the game by that on turn two. If you don't like kill the Arbor Elf or the Utopia Sprawl, they can just like turn to Moon you, and now all of a sudden you might be in a situation where you just have no cards you can cast for the rest of the game. Whereas Mono Blue like has a much, much better time plowing through that. So I think that's fine. Uh I also trimmed one brazen borrower. Um I had to I wanted to make some room to put some other stuff on the sideboard, so I moved the Force of Negation back into the main deck and trimmed one Borrower. I think that it's fine. Borrower is okay, but it's... You don't necessarily need all four of them. I think three is just fine. Um, uh, really, like, playing at least two, I think, is extremely important. But the third and the fourth ones, they're much more debatable as to how much you need them. I think, like, three is a good number. You can easily get away with this, so... And putting the other Force back in the main deck opens up more space from the sideboard. I mean, you could play a dismember and leave one force on the sideboard. Like, there's, there's a lot of things you can do with this slot. And this is what I just chose to do with it for now. So, I'm going to put two cavernous souls in here. Um, if the Bant control deck, or if the Bant snow deck is going to be a popular deck, then they play lots of counter spells. Stuff like Cryptic Command, where I really want to be able to just undermine them. Like, you do not want to, like, have them remand or mana leak or logic knot or stuff like that. I don't think actually they they may not be playing logic knot. Um, sure. I think there might be a couple other ones like that they're playing, but because the the delve would interfere with Uro. But yeah, they do have some counter spells in their deck, like Archmage's Charm. Yeah, that one's really big. You really don't want them to be able to just counter your stuff. Like the vial is sort of helpful for that, but they can steal the vial with the charm so that it turns on their other counter magic. So Having the caverns um, totally undermines that plan, so it's helpful for that reason. So we're going to play two of them, and because we are also going to be playing with, you know, all these double blue things where we need, like, two blue mana for, you know, Brazen Borrower and Force of Negation and, like, Deprive and Ashiok, um, I don't think you, you really don't want to go and cut too many actual blue sources, so I decided to cut one Muta Vault, and then I'm only going to play three Castle Vantress here in order to play the two caverns. Like, this leaves us with 15 blue sources, which is all, is kind of pushing it a little bit, but, you know, it's a risk that I'm willing to take, but really don't want to go any lower than that, I think. Going to 14 is just begging to be in a situation where you're going to have, like, Deprive or Ashiok stranded in hand and no way to actually deploy it. So Sometimes those sideboard cards really matter, and you really need to be able to cast them at the right time. So that's... I think this is fine. I mean, we have enough utility amongst our lands here. The Castle Vantress is sort of like Waterlogged Grove in that it helps us not flood out at the end of the game. It's really, really good when you have Aether Vial in play. You know, being able to activate Castle Vantress to put something on to a creature on top of your deck and then vial it in means that you never run out of gas. So. The Scry 2 is very good when you're trying to grind out a deck like John did in the late game. Um, it doesn't have the immediate draw a card and you know, just kill him this turn effect that Grove has, but it also doesn't cost you life every time you tap it for mana, so there is that. And remember, because this also requires you to have an island in play, you have to be careful about how many islands you're going to trim for this. Like, probably 11 would be the lowest number that you could get away with with playing these, but... You really need to be like mindful of that. That you don't want to be stuck with hands where you have like you know Mutavolt, Castle of Interest, and Aether Vial, and then not being able to play something in turn two because this is going to come into play tapped with you don't when you don't have an island. So that's why I think like three is a fine number. I'm fine with trimming one of these and one Mutavolt to make the two the room for two caverns. Uh, sideboard, everything's like basically standard. We put our dismembers in the sideboard so that way you know. We, yeah, we moved them to the board so we can put Master here. Um, the only thing that's like really different is I'm also going to put two Tidebinder Mages here. I think there's a lot of really good targets for this. Um, stuff like Uro, you know, the Glorybringers, Tarmogoyfs. There, there's a lot of red-green stuff running around that really like to be able to tap down with it. So I think this is a fine card. 
even against a deck like humans where they have stuff like noble hierarch and uh, mantis rider you, like this can help slow them down sometimes and it's a card it's a good card to board in when like force of negation is not good if you're just looking to grind your opponent out like tidebinder mage is very good at that so i think that it's it's definitely possible that you know we might want more of this card in our sideboard but i think for right now i only want to put two copies here um I'm going to put two Deprives here, like, a lot of times, you know, you need to supplement Force of Negation if you're playing against, like, a combo deck. Deprive is something you can actually cast for two mana on your own turn, whereas Force, you know, on your turn, you have to pay three for it, so. Counter Shields are going to be down on your turn if you don't have Deprive sometimes. It might be relevant against decks like uh, Electro Living End, um, or maybe um, that if Neo Brand, if you come up against that, like, you really want this card. Even against like, the control deck, I think a lot of times Deprive is sometimes better than Force of Negation because you're looking, especially the the new Uro decks, like, they, they are looking to grind out a longer game. They have a lot more value cards in them, stuff that, like, almost every one of the cards they play on their deck says, draw a card on it. It's like Ice Fang, you know, their Astrolabes, um, Uros, Cryptic Commands, like, they are just looking to grind out value out of every spell. And if you're two for one in yourself to try to counter one of their plays, they're still going to get ahead. So I think having Deprive against them is very helpful. You don't, you really don't want to have to exile a card to cast this from your hand unless it's very necessary to do that. And I mean, there don't get me wrong, there are times where it is necessary, but like against Tron, like you definitely want to be able to tap out and do this. But if you're going to go into a long grind game, like even against Jund, like Deprive is a much better card against a fair deck like Jund than Force of Negation is because you really you want to be one for one in your opponent, not two for or not one for like two in them. So, so. yeah, you know what? Sometimes you might have to force Liliana the Veil, but at the same time, it's only costing them one card and it's costing you two cards, so it's almost as bad as if it resolves anyway. So, whereas if you are able to deprive something like that, then now you're now you still have that extra card in your hand, so keep in pace with them, and then maybe you can grind out a win that way. So, um, yeah, no, mono blue looks like it would be good for me, or good to me. So I'm I'm interested in trying this to see how it goes. All right. So enough talking. Let's go play. We'll see. Where are we at here? Uh, you might notice I have, uh, I decided I wanted a new avatar here. Uh, I have been posting on Twitter. Um, there is a 30 things about, you know, magic. But I'm posting a new one every day. And the one, I think the most, one of the more recent ones was like, what is your favorite planeswalker? And of course, my favorite planeswalker is Nicol Bola. So I didn't even realize, like, the thought had never occurred to me that, like, there was even a Bolas avatar. I have not looked at, like, any of the non-card stuff on MTGO for a very long time. Uh, yeah. Making sure that that's the right deck. Okay. So, yeah, it turns out, like, a lot of the avatars are ridiculously, ridiculously cheap, so I was like, okay, fine. Vanity is worth, like, you know, one cent of value to me. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I guess a new era for this. This is, like, our... I have to look at, like, how long have we been playing Magic on this channel. I think it's been, like, a year now. Just about. Maybe a little bit more. So, about a year later, now we finally have a different avatar. Alright, let's do this. Moving is sucked. <laughs> We're on the play. I feel like I should know this name. Mm. I mean, this hand looks like it's sort of fine. It's a little slow, though. Let me see. I, that name looks familiar to me. Okay, there that person plays Tron like a lot. That's right. So the spreading seas is probably very good against them. Uh, I 
yes, I'm going to keep this. Moles to six, okay. This is one thing I find, like, interesting, like, how do people feel about, like, you know, just, uh, looking up opponents on MTGO? Is that something that people, is it, is it expected behavior that people would do something like that? Really want to draw third land so we can start deploying this stuff. Let's get our Lord of Atlantis out first. Probably play Spreading Seas next turn. Okay, they dismember it. That's fine. It means we definitely have to do this, so. Okay, we're gonna for sure hit this tower. Um, you know what, though? They can't do it this turn. So, like, they're only going to get two mana, so I don't think they're going to be able to use it. I think we can afford to wait. Right, let's play the Regery first. Um, hold on. We, let's make this uncounterable. Why not? We have the mana to do this, so... Yeah, they can get their two mana, but we can just seize them off the land they search for, so... They can play Power Plant. So they have two mana, so... Alright, dismember again. That's fine. All right, let's spreading seize the power plant, and if we are lucky, we can draw another land to play this master. Beautiful. Alright. They have four cards left. We don't have a force or anything though, so we're kind shields are down a little bit. So we really need to do something quickly. I might even <sighs> that's rough. So here it might be a good opportunity to play Master Waves. Probably Zeldrazi Tron. I don't know if regular Tron plays the dismembers in the main deck. Uh, eh. I mean, it could be either one, really. Let's see, if I play Master Waves, it's going to make four tokens. Alright, so let's attack first, I guess. Right? So I don't think there's any... Well, so here's the other... Th uh, if we play Regery this turn... No, we can play it next turn. It might make more sense to do that, too. They play... So I'm just trying to think, okay, what happens if they play something like Thought Nuts here? If we play Master Waves now, I think that's better. Because that puts, like, a, the half... Like, they've already used two Dismembers. The chance that they have a third removal spell are extremely low. Uh, so Master will put... Four two ones in the field, so they'll be at ten. So like, that should be enough to kill them. Yeah, uh, I think that. I, well, all right, let's attack first. I, I'm not. Let's, let's see what happens. I don't think that they. If they have another removal spell, let's see if they use it on this master first. Okay. They have walking ballista, they have to put two counters into this thing anyway, so. And they can't kill the tokens with the blast zone, which is nice. They can charge it up and kill off this master. That's fine. Playing master wave means this is this is enough to kill them right now. This is 10 power, so even if they kill off the master with the blast zone, it wouldn't be enough. So Master Waves. Back in action, baby! <laughs> so 
So we gotta. It's hard to know whether this is a, a match where dismember is gonna be good or if it's not. We definitely want damping sphere. We definitely want spreading seas. Now, if this is regular Tron, like deprive this. Uh, it's rough. Um, I don't think Silvergill Adept is usually good in these matches. The problem is Silvergill Adept is very weak to walking Ballista. And honestly, Master Waves is not usually very good either. So, what do we do here? Take into the two Deprives. So we still have 23 creatures. Um, hmm. You know about Blast Zone. Like, Ashia is sort of, like, it, it turns off stuff like Expedition Map, but if it's Eldrazi Tron, this card is not very good. If this is a little bit better against regular Tron, but I'm usually, against regular Tron, I don't really feel like we need it that badly. So the question is, what do we do? We bring in like one dismember just as a hedge against like Thought Not Seer or something like that. Or do we bring in like another creature to beat down with? Like Tidebinder Mage in this match is just a two-two. It's unlikely that if it's regular Tron, then maybe they have something like Thrag Tusk on the sideboard, but that's usually not the case. So is drawing a card better than? Just having too toughness to avoid walking ballista. Eh, it's hard to say. Um, I don't think there's nothing else here I really want to take out now. The vials are all fine. Some, I mean, we don't really get. Yeah, we're not looking to trim more cards. I think we just need to bring something in. I'm leaning towards silver gill right now. I mean, we could be wrong, and this could be Eldrazi Tron, and so I think he's played both. So it's it's a gamble. Um, I could just bring in one dismember. You know what? Maybe we'll do that. All right, miser dismember, and maybe we'll adapt it away if it becomes dead later on. Okay, we'll try it like this, see how it goes. We're up a game, so we have some room to screw around. Okay, on the play. Um fuck. <laughs> if we if this was on right like an island, I think this would be a keep. Ah, oh, because we have the damping sphere too, which is great against their deck usually, but there's no we're not guaranteed to be able to cast this and we can't get the vial in line, so I think we have to mulligan. This is better. I think this is fine. So I think we keep this, and I'm going to put Trickster, I think, on the bottom here. Dude, I feel, yeah, that's that's got to be correct. You're getting impatient with us. I think, yeah, no, we are definitely going to counter this thing. Okay, this is getting better. Radiant Fountain, Ooh, that means that has to be Eldrazi Tron. I don't think regular Tron plays that card. That's not bad. It's more lords. Uh, well. Let's play this one. So if I play the Lord of Atlantis, then it tells them that it's more likely I have one of these in my hand. I don't know if that's going to matter for anything, but... Mattery Shaper. I knew it! If we draw a land, that would be Fantastic. It's not bad either. I don't think I really want to trade with this just yet. I 
This is Violin Lord. And if nothing bad happens, then I will probably just tick up Vile to 3 and then play Regery. Tech Edge, okay. Thought Not Seer, um... Player Lord, and then sure. They're going to take Regery like 100%. The only reason they don't take Regery is if they have something like All is Duster in their hand that, you know, they. But even still, like that, that then they're playing around just draw. Like, they, they, they have no hope of us. Like, yeah, like, if we draw an island, then it doesn't matter anyway, so. No. All right, well, we can't really attack. Okay, so here, we're just waiting to see what they do, but we have force up, so. They're not in a terrible spot. Like, it's not, they have four cards, but they don't have Tron yet. Well, they might have another Thought Knot, though. If they have Karn, then we just have to counter it. Chalice of the Void, X equals 2, um, this turns off Spreading Seas, but that's it, like, we have Cavern of Souls, I think this is a bait spell, I guess it turns off Petty Theft too, so if they, if they get, ever get Karn into, like, Ensnaring Bridge, that could be a problem, hmm, alright, I'm gonna counter it. I think that Petty Theft and the um, Spreading Seas are just too important. So I really need to be able to play both of those cards if I draw them. Uh, so here is a thing. Um, I don't know if I want to play this Mutal Vault or not, because if I do, they can actually Tech Edge the Mutal Vault. So I think I'm just going to pass again. And this also means if they play another Chalice of the Void, then we still have Cavern of Souls. Now that figures. Well, it uh, it still means that if we draw like Spreading Seas, we can still kill Karn. Like, yeah, in summer, like, we knew this is sort of bait, but at the same time, like, it shuts off, like, a lot of really important spells in our deck. And this, this shuts off different important things. So I think they probably just get Ensnaring Bridge, usually. Hmm. But, I guess, what do we want here? Oh, god, that's terrible. So we really could use a Lord this turn. Unfortunately, this doesn't do very much. I can't... I can't use the, the Vial right now. Oh, I, we are just in a, in a lot of trouble because of this Sky Sovereign. They can't cast it yet. Alright, it's a 6 mana card. No, it's a 5 mana card, so fuck. If they play another land, we're doomed. So it, it's also a lightning bolt every time it either enters the battlefield or attacks. And they can crew it easily. So we... They didn't play a land last turn, so they might not have the 5th land. Okay, well now they have it, so... I think we're we're dead. So they can just kill off our lord now. We're definitely bringing those dismembers in for sure, and then I think Benthic Biomancer is, is going to come out. Yeah. Well, this is probably a good spot for Thought Not Seer to start attacking. 
Oh, yeah, okay, we're dead. We, we're not coming back, because now they can just animate it and they can attack. Yeah. I don't know, maybe we're supposed to let the, the Chalice on 2 resolve, but, like, there is a lot of, like, there's a lot of ways that could also go very wrong for us if that happens, too. I don't know, it was very close, but maybe that was not correct. I think, we're on, being on the play means that, I think, what, Benthic Biomancer we, is not really as good. This member is better, though. Um, how, I think... The counter spells are fine. Maybe I don't want all of these forces. That's no, no, hard to say. I don't want to cut too many. Like, these are bad against Ballista, but at the same time, like, Force of Negation, I don't really... We have six counter spells. Do I need all six of them? I don't know. The Damping Sphere is sort of okay. It's not as good against Eldrazi Tron, but it's still fine. It still leaves us with 21 creatures. Eh, I guess I'm going to do it like this. Maybe we just know that Dismember's better now so we can bring it in. I would love to be in the play. This hand is great. We have, oh, actually this is like very, very good, I think. We have Vials and Lords, you know, our Castle Vantress, Force. It's exactly what we want to see. And we're hoping they don't... If they play Expedition Map, like, I think I'm just going to let them use it. But we don't have Cs, though, like, you know what? No, I'm going to counter this again, because the, if they had not played a Tron land in turn one, I think I might have let it resolve, but it's not bad. This member's fine, and then if they play like Eldrazi Temple and... Ooh, okay. This is sort of okay, too, because now if they play Thought Not Seer, we can just dismember it. We can file in Master and then dismember the Thought Not. Reality Smasher, that's actually okay. Yeah, you don't really want to be smashy smashing right now. We are also in a lot of danger of them just having, like, all his dust. Mm, I could dismember this right now, but I think I want to hold up this force. Yeah, this is exact. I don't want to have to waste this on this trigger for this thing. Nope. Okay, so here I think is a good spot. We can dismember this. Get in for five. They only have three cards left, so. Maybe they're not good. But they like like we're one bad play away from getting destroyed. Nine stone. Another Karn. Walking Ballista on two. Okay. So the question is, do you want to do this before I draw a card, which is potentially a lord that kills you? They only have one card left, so they they have a really hard choice. If they let me untap and I draw a lord, then I can just vial it in and blow them out. Yeah, okay. And they're not taking any chances. I don't I don't fault them for that at all. Nope. Okay. I'm 
And they do have Tech Edge in their deck, so I don't really need to play this island right now. Just kind of hoping they don't draw any gas. We have two card, three cards in this. Might just be lands. Okay, that's sort of good news. All right. Guess I'm gonna play this damping sphere. Cause now it keeps them from going like Tron into something ridiculous. Sick. Oh, that's terrible. That's also terrible. Alright, well, things are getting very hard now. Oh. <sighs> It just pluses every single turn. This might be a scenario, like, they can't take a blast zone this turn. <sighs> what are the chances we can win this game without Island Walk? This, this Ugin was a super top deck for them. Um, I can't put the Master in play yet. Problem is, they're going to make two twos every turn. I guess if we pass, then we could Violin Master in the end step, and then sp spreading seas into a Lord would be exactly enough to kill them. But that's only only that, and the problem is if we if other than like if we only have like one turn, like I think that that's the only line we can realistically take because they can just take up this blast zone and keep making blockers every turn. So that's what we're hoping for. That there our our top decks have to be exactly spreading seas into um a, a, another lord. Yep. Because otherwise, they're just going to take Blast Zone up to two, and then we're screwed. Yeah. Yep. Okay, well, they have no cards left in hand. Alright. One, two, three. That's not a seize. Okay, well we can't real I have I have to use the castle vantress. Yeah, like this is gonna make this harder now. Mm-hmm. Like we can't, we're not beating this blast zone right now. And if we try to play spreading seas on it, they can just activate it in response. And we're gonna lose our master of the pearl trident. This seems really preemptive to do this. Okay. I guess they just want to try to race us now. Okay, um, what are our outs here? Brazen Borrower? Just, I don't think that does anything. We have to do something because right now they're going to attack for, they're attacking for exactly nine. If I put Brazen Borrower on top, I can bounce, like, Matter Reshaper, and then play Brazen Borrower. <sighs> I still don't think... I don't know if that's going to do it, though. Like, what are the other outs that we have to this? 
like, okay, so then we'd have borrower, like, I guess seize into the Lord would not, that wouldn't be good enough then still. This is definitely going on the bottom. The question is, do we put brazen borrower on top? Like, I don't know what else we have, like, right now that's going to be good here, because, yeah, like, we definitely have to do something about this, or we're going to die, and... I don't want to chump block with Mutavolt. You don't have Master of Waves in the deck to rely on here. I don't think spreading season to anything is going to do much, and if we draw anything else, we're just forced to chump block, basically. I guess this is, like, this does, none of this feels winning. I think the pro, like, the fact that this can then just, like, destroy anything that we play regardless is a problem. Okay. Pass. Like, I, I don't think they were coming that through this one. That Ugin was just too much. Um, no, 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 don't, don't pass through the whole turn. Uh. I'm not blocking any of this. We can, yeah, like this is all just it's like super losing. Damn it, we were close. Like we got game one, and then everything just went to shit. So scrying here doesn't really help. I mean. I guess I have to play it. Okay, we're dead. <sighs> no, that's unfortunate. Damn it! We were, like that was that was close. Oh, Drowsy trying is hard. Like, yeah. It, I don't know. Like I don't I don't know if there's really much else we could have done against that. Like he just kind of had it and we didn't, so you know. Yeah, the, that that last game, like the blast zone coupled with Ugin was just too much to overcome in that amount of time. And like you managed to find like you know the walking ballista as well to like kill off the Lord, so I don't know. Sometimes they just that's the that's one of the reasons like Eldrazi Tron is so good, because the deck just randomly like does everything sometimes. Sometimes it's really clunky and they die, but it's tough for us, though. So. We are on the draw. Alright, cool. Oh, well, I guess. Um, this hand looks like we probably keep this, right? Yeah, okay. It's, I mean, it's got a curve that goes up to four for Master. We can lead off on Mutavolt, so we can attack with him in turn two. I think I'm willing to keep this. Okay, so Bloodstained Mire. This might be Death Shadow. Interesting. Let's play the Muta Vault. So it's, maybe it's Jund. This technically doesn't tell them what we're on, so. Godless Shrine, so this is like Mardu. Yes, okay, well. What are you doing? Tide. Oh, fuck, okay, yeah. I guess that's the thing. 
You can take like Morphog Trickster probably. Maybe Reedry. Reedry is probably a better choice. Take Trickster, okay, because I don't really want to attack this Mutavolt into a Tide Hollow. Uh, that's actually pretty good though. They already know about this, so we can just show them and get our card. Okay. I mean, maybe we can get to a point where double master waves will do it. Well, they, I think they take Reedry though. Like, they Reedry slows us down the most. It's going to be two turns before we can even do anything about this. And they might have something like Liliana, The Last Hope, or like Fatal Push or Collective Brutality in hand to deal with these. So this might be a Stoneblade deck. That's what I'm guessing. Interesting that they're using the Fatal Push and Silver Ghoul. No, okay, it's like what? Mar Mardu Shadow? Interesting. So maybe this Master Waves is going to be better than we think after all. If we can draw like more two drops, that would be great. Uh, I guess we just play Island and Pass. There's nothing else to do here. I can't block with the Muta Vault yet because I need it to cast Master Waves. I really need a two drop to play along with this Master to get more tokens. That's fucking terrible. They have one card left. They only attack with shadow, I guess that makes sense. They're trying to be careful here. Do you ping yourself with a clearing or do you just save it to draw a card? That's a good question. Do you ping yourself, you're pinging us. Yeah, all right, they pinged us, too. No, come on, two drop. No, why? All right, well, this is a sad Master Waves. Our hand was just getting ripped apart by spells, unfortunately. Yeah, like, the, the discard is just screwing us. We don't have the dismembers in the main deck, like... Dismember would have been much better because we could have killed that Death Shadow. They're at six. Like, they actually are in danger, I think. What happens if I draw, like, Spreading Season to a Lord? That, that actually does kill them, so. We're not dead yet. <clears throat> I'm not gonna block. Spreading Seas into Lord, I think, wins the game. That's not the Lord that does it, though. See, now we're kind of in an unfortunate spot where we're going to have to block with two things. We can attack with two shadows. We have to probably throw this master and this elemental in front of one of each of them. But the seas into Lord plan, I think, still wins. Mm -hmm. So the question is... Do I use the Muta Vault to block? I think I use the Master Waves. There's one card that's just random in hand. It could be a land. 
Nope. Okay, now this is the last turn. We have to draw something now. Season the Lord. That's it. That's what we need. So here's actually an interesting thought. I can... Maybe, you know, maybe all hope is not lost yet. Um... Because if they block with the Tide Hollow Sculler, we get stuff back to cast. Okay, so this actually was not a terrible draw. If they don't block, they're dead. If they block the Regery, whatever they block Regery with is going to die, and we get a card back. And that card can actually block both Death Shadows. So, you know what? This is sort of working out. They're trying to figure out how greedy can they afford to be with their life total right now. Please don't block. Don't block. Just take it. Yeah, it's like, they're either giving me back Master Waves or they're giving me back Merfolk Trickster. And I think either one of them is fine. Sword of Feast and Fam, it's not going to do it. Because we can block that, so it's going to be up to whatever they draw off the top. But you know what? This Master was actually a good draw this turn. This, le this lets us threaten to kill them, so they're forced to block something, and means they're giving us cards back. Shit, we might be turning this game around. This is an incredibly like hard block for them. Like they have no idea. Like we could just have a random land in our hand. They don't know what it is that we have. So if they don't block, they're dead. But they don't know that. Like, they could just think, okay, well, maybe this could be a desperation attack from us to try to get something back. To... All right. Ooh, okay. That's interesting. So in this case, I think I would want... I think I'd still take the Master Waves, right? I think that actually might be the correct block from them. Okay, so they're not blocking. Alright, well I have it. You gambled and you lost. I think they were correct though. They should have probably considered blocking with both. Uh, well, okay. If they block with both, they kill off the Regery, but then they're going to give us our choice of one card. But I don't know, like it's hard to say. Not blocking was definitely a risk, but wow, that was incredible. All right, well, we definitely want Dismember for this match. I think Spreading Seas is usually fine against this deck. I don't know if Force... This is Stoneblade, so maybe Force of Negation is not that good. Because if they're... I don't know, this is difficult. Uh, we have to cut some cards. Master is not great because they have like a lot, like basically their entire deck is full of spells that kill Master Waves, but it's hard. Uh, I don't know. Like Plague Engineer is also a serious concern. Hmm. I think we want Spreading Seas probably. I think Force of Negation comes out. Maybe Deprive comes in? I think that the random Deprives are probably better. And we have to cut three cards, so... Probably either Master or Benthic Biomancer, so... The thing for me is, like, Master of Waves can just randomly win the game. Benthic Biomancer is usually pretty poor against this deck. It, we don't want to have a lot of X1s against them because of Plague Engineer. But, it's like, 
do we want the X one that tries to aggro them out or the the master? I think I think master waves has got to be better. I don't know. So they were playing Bloodstained Myers, so they might have access to some red cards in their deck, like maybe there's bolts or team or battle rages or something. So maybe Master like has some value. Maybe Culligan's command is a thing that we need to be concerned about. And if that's the case, then we might want these relics actually. This one relic may be much better than Benthic Biomancer. Actually, do it like this. Because this is also a thought seize deck, so like it's fine to take out some vials against them. Alright, we'll do it like this. I don't know, we'll, we'll see how this goes. It's definitely possible that, like, Relic is going to be better. Um, so we are on the draw. So here's the thing, like, the Dismembers are very good. They thought season take the Vile, we're not doing anything. We have, like, no creature power in our hand either. Think we have to mulligan this. If we had like one more creature, like, like we can't cast anything. Like, ugh. normally, like we have stuff that we could do off of one mana, but the dismembers are only relevant once they play other stuff, and they're not gonna play it until they get rid of the dismembers. I think we mulligan for something better. This is definitely better. Keep this. Uh, I think master goes in the bottom here. My hands are getting cold. <laughs> I'm gonna thought seize us for sure. Yeah, all right. Uh, this is still fine. I'd rather them thought seize like this hand because this hand at least has power in it. So they kept seven cards in the play. Uh, okay. So, yeah, they have some ch tough choices to make. Like, they might want to take the Spreading Seas, but they took the Lord. Okay, so maybe that means Plague Engineer is a thing in their hand. I might... Uh, so we have two Seas now, so trying to seize them out of this game might be a legitimate plan. Street Wraith. So they might go for, like, sh and try to get an early Shadow out. And I don't really want to play creatures in the face of removal right now, so. I think Tide Hollow Scholar. Uh, I mean, I think I just deploy a Seize anyway. Yeah, they took one, so like the I think we want to get the other the free card off of the second one first. So we def oh, that's actually very good. So Spreading Seas, this Godless Shrine. Let me draw here. Another Dismember. Okay. That's fine, because now if we can draw another land next turn, we might get to kill this thing, get our Seas back, and then cast Seas. And they can't Thought Seas away like the Dismember. Oh, we're going to kill that for sure. They not have a third land. Oh, they don't have a third land. Okay, so if we draw a land, we're definitely gonna kill their stuff. So I guess here. Cycling a street wraith does not save their death shadow. I think I wanna kill this thing right now. We'll save the other dismember for when they attack us in their turn. They only have a blue mana, so they can't really protect it anyway. What? What are you doing? Oh, shit, I see. They're going to give us our spreading seeds back for free. Okay. So we have three cards left in hand. So here's the thing. We were going to do this anyway, so... If their entire game plan is based on this, then I'm just going to kill this anyway. So if they don't play a land this turn, Spreading Seas might just kill them. 
they have to take spreading seeds. If they don't take seeds, they're just lost, so. Deprive, okay. This is fine. We'll deploy Trickster at end of turn, and if they do anything relevant, we can just counter it. This is not a bad spot. Because now we're threatening to just, like, kill them. Um, okay. Sure. I'm not going to counter that. Like, you're just kill You're doing the work for us at this point. We're going to play Trickster, and then we're just going to hold up Deprive, and that's going to be that. Oh, that was fantastic. Like, there's no way they can come back from this, right? Like, they need to have, like, multiple Fatal Pushes, I think. I don't think it matters. Like, if we draw a land, like, I don't even know if it's going to help them. Like, yeah, we just killed them. So, they got choked on mana. They tried to get cute with Dismember, and then we just had the second Dismember, so... All right, well, so they did play Sword of Feast and Famine, which means I'm I'm sure that they have Stoneforge Mystic in that deck, for sure. I don't know. I guess I'm assuming that there was probably like Team or Battle Rages in that deck, and that's, but maybe Red was a very light splash. I mean, I think there are a few Esper versions of Shadow as well that play stuff like Esper Charm and. I think they play like Ranger, Captain of Eos. There's a couple, like, is there any other Stubborn Denial, I guess? Uh, we didn't see what their splash was. They, they could have just been like, you know, Black White Stone Blade with Shadow. It's interesting. But yeah, the main deck sort of Feast of Famine means I'm sure that there is a Stoneforge Mystic and probably a Batter Skull in their main deck. Alright, well, on the round three. We are on the play versus McWindsauce. Um, McWindsauce, I that is a name I probably should know, and I I don't remember what decks he normally plays. A little bit of everything, probably. Uh, so Bant, it looks like maybe. I think that's the last like couple modern stuff he played is like a snow snow stuff. So I definitely want to be on the play. Yeah, you know what? I should I should know that like. I, I I am I know this person's name. I like I don't know. I I don't memorize like what people play and stuff. And and honestly, like it, especially if you're gonna play in like a bigger event, it's really useful if like you know what like a lot of the popular players play. Because especially if you win the first few rounds, like the chances that you get paired up against them are think are very high. Um, Sand is fine, I guess. Yorion, what the fuck? <laughs> 73 card, okay, uh, <laughs> so this is a new card, um, yeah, so you have to have at least 20 cards more than the minimum deck size, so, trying to think, like, what, I guess maybe if he's gonna, if he, he might have stuff like Ice Fang Coatl on his deck, it might be an entirely new, um, entirely, uh, new deck, because, like, this, this card is, so, so I've, I've heard very mixed things about it. Some people really believe in the power of this card, and some people don't. Um, I think we're going to keep our hand. We're just going to hope that it's going to be good enough against what they're doing. But we know about... This card is effectively in his hand. It's a 5-drop, so... You know, let's hope that like we can just kind of curve like into a win here. Kept seven cards, right? Yeah. Fucking Yurion. What? What is happening in my life? <laughs> this card defies like all the conventional um, philosophy about how magic is supposed to be played. Alright, well, I'm just going to play Master and hope that he doesn't have Spell Snare. Might have path to exile. Might path this master. <laughs> what the fuck is this? 
the Trium land, so Mountain Swamp Plain, so okay, so he's going Jeskai with this. I mean this is this is definitely a fine card to search for in turn one, so today's the first card day that like all these cards are legal, so it's possible they're just like testing a bunch of stuff. I don't know if make I don't know, does this person stream? Like they maybe they're recording gameplay with like these new cards. That's entirely possible. Interesting. I think what I'm probably going to do here... Uh, huh. I think I'm just going to attack with these two, and if he does anything, like, if he flashes in, like, what is it? I think you can... Mountain Plain Swamp. Okay, never mind. Mountain Plain... What? So this is like... A four. This is like a four-color deck, I guess. Or are you just are maybe this is like a Kiki deck of some kind. Like me, I don't know. Like some kind of maybe some kind of value deck. But like he's or like maybe has lots of blinky stuff. Ah, this is confusing. What mountain plain swap? Okay, arid mesa here. I mean, presumably, if you have scalding time, that means you have islands in your deck. If you probably don't want to get Island against a Merfolk deck. Uh, it's tough. I think what I'm going to do is probably just attack for four, and then I'll play Silvergill Adept. Like I said, if it's a Mountain Plain Swamp, I don't think there's anything you can flash in that I'm really worried about here. No, nothing, okay. Let's cast Silvergill. I'm not going to play a land first in case... I guess I'll show him another Lord. <clears throat> in case I draw a Mutavon, I want to play that. Cavern of Souls. That's actually great. He does not need to know about that. So let's see. Right now, we have him on a two-turn clock. Get, okay, so this one is the... Uh, this one's the Jeskai one, sorry. Island Mountain Plains, okay. So what are you doing with this here? You played three fetch lands. You have Oath of Kaya, okay. You just kill the Lord, I assume. Well, they're tapped out right now, so... But I might want to adapt this Benthic Biomancer and at some point and cycle away this island, so I am going to play the Cavern of Souls first. They know I have this, so I may as well use it. So I don't want to adapt it now, probably, because I may want to flash in this Trickster. Blinking the Oath of Kaya seems like that'd be pretty good. These are all the all of these are like new cards, so gotta be careful. I mean, yeah, this seems really good with Blinky shenanigans. Another Oath of Kaya, yeah. So here's the choice. Like, they're going to go after this master. For sure. I could try to go for a force of negation here if I adapt Benthic Biomancer. If I get if I get force of negation off the top with this thing, I actually win like immediately, but otherwise I'm still trying to win in like two turns. He hasn't played a land yet, so but presumably he has to have a land, so like the problem is he's gonna play a land and then next turn he can play this thing. I'm just trying to figure out like if I play the Merfolk Trickster right now, I think I, I think I want to go for this line because I think it's unlikely that if we don't draw the okay, yeah, we'll put that on the bottom. Sure, you're going to kill the master, that's fine. 
But I think it was worth it because this still lets us threaten to do some serious damage here. If he doesn't play a land, I'm probably going to play this Master of Waves. But if he does play a land, like, I think we have to go Silvergill into Trickster. Okay. It's 10. Okay, so there's got to be, like, a Bolt or a Path coming. Okay, so I can play Silvergill Adept. Try to draw a Lord. But surely what's going to happen is he's going to blink this thing next turn. Kill off another creature, but I want to be able to play Trickster. Tap this thing down and then attack past it. So I'll be able to presumably... He's going to go to 8 probably this turn. I don't have 6 power. Like we're, I think we're in a situation where if we draw a Lord in the next few cards, we can probably just kill him. So... I think that's what I want to do here. I will reveal Master of Waves. I don't want to play Master because the Oath of Kaya, when it blanks, can just kill the Master, so there's no reason to do that yet. That's fine. Path, yep. Goes to eight. So I guess we play the island. There's an argument to keep it in hand in case we draw Benthic Biomancer. But surely he's going to cast his companion and just like blink this Oath of Kaya. That's what I'm anticipating. Yeah. Both will put him back up to 10. Okay, so he's already cast his companion, so it's, it's fine. Let's use the trickster. Do that, and I think we're going to play master this turn. Force him to have removal for master. And I will threaten to like hard cast force of negation. If it doesn't do anything, I'm just gonna trickster this down. Okay. Who has a path on top? It's a fairy time raveler. Um, we have to do this right now. So bouncing the master is not going to stop him from dying. So we're going to tap this down, and he's dead. Okay, so, oh, okay, you, you can bounce the Oath of Kaya, I guess, and you kill a Master of Waves that way. So I guess we're just going to activate Castle Vantress and then just try to put a Lord on top in the upkeep, so. No! I didn't put the stop! Oh my god. <sighs> Fuck. I'm going to, if I, if, that, that was so dumb. You kill Teferi, you kill his face, you kill his face. Should... I needed to do this on my upkeep. Um... Damn it! I guess we're still in a scenario... Like, he has Path in his hand still, too. Spreading seeds. Oh, fuck. Alright, well.
All right. At least like we weren't gonna we weren't getting it. I, I maybe I was supposed to play the vial there. Silvergill could put Silvergill on top. It's not the worst thing to do. Like, actually, you know what? I'm gonna put it on top. It's fine. Damn it! That was like that was a mistake. I was supposed to do that in my upkeep because then maybe it could have affected decisions. Here's another Teferi. Well, I mean, if he's gonna bounce his stupid Oath of Kaya again, isn't he? he still has Path in hand, right? Because he drew it off of the. He's also in a scenario with this Teferi where he can keep bouncing this thing and like blinking the. The Oath of Kaya, so. Astrolabe. Okay, so he does have, like, the path mana up. Uh... I don't think he has a counter spell, so it doesn't matter. Well, that's not helpful. You can attack him down to two. No, but he can path one of these things and then. Both. Maybe I think I might just have like the problem is like now we can just start like doing this thing where he bounces this with Teferi, plays this and blinks this thing. It's gonna be terrible. I don't have a good I don't have a good answer to this either. Attacking him is not going to kill him. He's left the path up, you know, like I don't think that scry is like really ruined us too badly, but no, like this this is getting out of hand quickly. Like we needed this force a little bit earlier. Maybe I was supposed to just not attack the Teferi before. Problem is, if I attack it now... It only it still puts it down to 3 and like... You know, that's terrible. Like, no, I don't... Maybe attacking is just not correct right now, so... I'm gonna just play this Aether Vial. We're in a scenario where we really need a lord in order to try to get there. Because this is going to get out of hand very fast. Yeah, I can't block this. So if he goes up to... So actually, here's the thing. If he goes up to... If we do draw a lord, we actually have... Well, no, we can't counter it because of the Teferi. Damn it. Yeah, that's right, we forgot. Teferi turns off, like, half of the game, because, you know, that's great. You know, that that's how magic should work. This Force of Negation basically is not even a real card. It's a card that can only be, count, uh, only be cast at instant speed, and guess what? Instants don't exist anymore because of, you know, of that. You just... Teferi fucking Thanos snapped away instants from the game. <laughs> and he can just like this is insane oh my god this is like stupid Yurion but, like we were so close to like coming ahead in this game too like damn it I don't even know like why do they have all these different like the red mana source like I guess six cards in hand fucking hell <laughs> God. Um, yes. Oh, yeah, because we had the stop here for Castle Ventress. Alright, no, fuck it. 
I don't want to play this game anymore because we are not beating this. Jesus Christ. Okay, well, we want Deprive, I guess, for this deck, and part of the problem is that, like, Spreading Seas is sort of good against usually four-color decks, but not when Astrolabe is a card. Like, that surely doesn't matter, so... I want the two Relics because they have the, the Sanctuary. And what else? What, what can we take out here? I don't really want to take very much out. Um, most of these cards are actually pretty decent. I don't want to take out Benthic Biomancer because this it still gives us a way to like try to aggro him. I mean, he does have red in his deck, so like Master could be relevant, but it's probably not. Same thing, like, I don't know. I'm going to take out two Masters. He has, like, so many ways to kill it with, like, you know, the Paths and Oath of Kaya's, like... Oh, uh, you know what? I could have kept in one Master and cut, like, an island. That, that might have made sense. Yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Like... Going to 19 mana with Master is always tough. Oh, fuck. This hand, four land. Like, I don't think that I'm beating this deck with four lands. No, I, I need something more aggressive than that. This is sort of better, actually. We have a curve that goes up to three. No, I don't want this upkeep stop and... I only need this when Castle Vantress is a thing. Alright, so I guess we're just gonna try to, like, you know, Lord, Lord, and then kill him. That's the only thing we can realistically hope for. This Aether Vial is coming a little bit late. I really wanted that last turn, because now it's gonna, it, like, totally disrupts our curve to, like, play it. Probably getting a try land. I, mean, I guess it's. Yeah. Okay. It's fine. So, yeah, you revealed that. Yep. I'm going to play Astrolabe. Wall of Omens. Okay. That's neat. However, the Benthic Biomancer still has Island Walk, so let's worth something. This could be a Supreme Verdict deck, too. That's entirely possible. Hmm. It could be Verdict. So... We don't have Dismembers in the deck. They're like... I guess we're just attacking with Benthic Biomancer here. Wall of Omen. This has like this has to be a sign that this is like a, a Wrath deck too. Could play Redry, but I don't know if I want to because then I can't play the Silver Gill Adept. On the other hand, there's also the possibility then I could play Redry, and then if I draw another Merfolk next turn, then I could potentially cast Silvergill, tap this thing down, and attack with everything. That's, that is so all in. I don't know. I might even just keep this vial in hand just to adapt to this Benthic Biomancer. No, you know what? I think I'm gonna I'm gonna be patient. I think I'm gonna. All right, let's attack with Ben. We're gonna play Silver Gill Adept. Yeah, 
It says island walk, right? So might be trying to block right now. There's no point in attacking with the Lord because the Wall of Omens can just block it. It doesn't do anything. Relic's not bad. It's a card that I actually do want to play this turn. So now I can attack for six with Island Walk next turn. This deck also might have Uro in it. Well, no, wait, you know, it maybe maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Like it's hard to say. Ooh, this means Oath of Kaya for sure, right? Yeah, so he's gonna zap the Lord. So it means I can just play Mara Regery. Still get in for three damage. No, I only get in for two. Ah, oh, that's so frustrating. Ah, uh, okay. Because so I think I... The problem is, like, the f he has the Oath of Kaya again. And I don't... The, the Force doesn't stop this from him doing his stupid blinky shenanigans. I really don't want to pitch Reedry. This is this is all kinds of bad. I'm just gonna hit him for one. I need to hold up this force in case something terrible happens. So I don't wanna I don't wanna throw away Reedry to it. I need to like actually hard guess it. Now this oath of Kai is ridiculously difficult for us to to, to beat. Yeah, this is exactly what I was worried about. We need to counter this thing. It doesn't have a fourth land, that's interesting. Um, okay. Hold on a sec. So, we actually might be able to race him now. Let's cast this Regery. If we can draw another land, Master Waves might just win the game by itself. He doesn't have, or he didn't have land number four last turn. There is Lightning Bolt, okay. Maybe that's all he has though. Spreading Seas on the island, that's desperation. My island is now even Islander. <laughs> Alright. He wants to protect the bolt because presumably he has, or he still has like Mystic Sanctuary. He might want to put the bolt on top. This is fine. He'll exile the polluted delta instead. Protect the bolt. The bolt's more important. Okay, so just attack. He's still banking on top decking another land right now. So he just drew that land last turn, so he might not have another land this turn. Okay, well, hope that he doesn't draw another land, otherwise Oath of Kai is getting blinked and this Master Waves is going to get blinked too. No! Oh, fuck me. Right. That's just as bad. All right.
I'm not really worried about counter spells right now. Let's card Aether Vial. You know, this might be a good time to crack Relic, because if we draw a Lord, I really want to be able to just play it. Didn't draw a land last turn, so let's continue adding to the board, I guess. <clears throat> Felidar Guardian, okay, more blinky shenanigans. So this is gonna blink and kill off like Silvergill Adept, probably. Yeah. And he killed off the other Benthic Biomancer, so I guess that. So, I don't, I guess, like, here's the thing do we take the turn off to scry here? I think that we might want to do that. Brazen Borrower and Force of Negation. Those are two cards that I really do want to see. Probably in that order as well. There's not really any reason to play this island this turn. Attacking doesn't do anything here because of the Felidar Guardian, so we need him to brick on land again. But he's not going to brick on land forever. Eventually he's going to draw it and we're going to be boned. We just have not had a good answer to this Oath of Gaia. Okay, um... We, we lose. He has Sahili Rain, infinite combos us! Okay, well, that was that. <laughs> this the, the ridiculous, like, four-color blinky deck just killed us. I guess Yurion was just... Wow, it's really good with Oath of Kaya, I guess, so... Turns out Companion, you know, being an eighth card in your hand is actually very good. Who would have guessed that? Yeah, I, I, I can't possibly imagine how, you know, starting, you know, with eight cards instead of seven could possibly be, you know, something that might break the game. <laughs> So, you know what? I didn't believe in the in Yurion until I just watched what it can do in a game. So, like, yeah, you know what? Maybe maybe it is worth playing 80 cards in your deck if it means that you get to have that as, like, you're threatening to just, like, take over the game with it. I guess, like, it's, you know, it's been a very long-standing thing where you need a very, very good reason not to play 60 cards in your deck. And you know what? Maybe that card is actually a good enough reason not to. A 4-5 flyer for 5 that, like, blinks and gets you tons of value, like, seems like that could be fine, so. This deck is really cool, like, for sure. It has, like, lots of new cards in it and abuses lots of blinky synergies. So, I don't know. We'll be interested to see how, like, that comes out. Like, this is the first day that anybody's been able to play it, so we'll see how it, if, if it holds its... Holds the candles for the rest of this format. I think it has a, a pretty good chance, and the fact that he's willing to like this person's willing to play it means that it probably does. Um. All right. Well, we are on the play. Cool. I don't recognize his name. I'll check it just to be sure. But uh, No, I have no idea. Okay. This is total dog shit. This is better, I guess. Keep this. I think 
we're gonna put brazen borrower in the bottom. Oh, like this is certainly much. Uh, it's certainly a fine hand, but uh, it leaves a little bit to be desired. I don't. It's, it's close between whether brazen borrower or master of waves is gonna be better. All right. Well, at least. Oh, damn it. I hate having to do that with Castle Vantress, but you know what? That's just then that stop is important when this is in play and you have the mana for it. So, so there's a lot, of, especially with the vial, like that makes it a lot different. Okay, what are we up against here? Forest. Okay. Forest pass. Interesting. This might be the red green ramp deck, but. I find it hard to believe that they would keep a hand that didn't do anything. Well, Force of Negation is a pretty good pickup here. Probably just flash in tricks during the end step. But it means whatever nonsense we're facing down, like we have answers to it. And I might have to try to tick this vial up. Do you not have a second land? Oh, that's beautiful. So we're probably not going to take Vial up here. It'll, it'll be faster to probably just try to naturally draw another land. I don't know, maybe we still do though, because we might want to hard cast this Force. I have a feeling like this is, might just be enough to like make them concede, because they only have one land and they're not doing anything. Infect! Oh god, okay. Um, yeah, we need to hang on to this Force. Oh, badly. He kept one land, so maybe they had like Blighted Agent in hand? I think Master's probably not very good here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take Vile up. Well, that makes... Alright. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? Nothing. Okay. Okay, well, in that case, I'm just going to play Master of Waves. Because that's, like, for sure going to kill you. Like, you, that, like, that has to be a concession, right? We're up against Infect, and they don't have any way to kill us this turn. Playing a second forest, okay. I, I, yeah, Icar Claw. That does nothing. You're still dead. Like, very dead. You can block three, but you're still going to take, you're still taking 14 damage exactly. Uh, I'm going to leave it on three now. Can, if we draw a Mara Redre, that'd be fine. Um, that's okay. All right. Master Wave's typically not very good against Infect because it's a very slow card, but at the same time, I don't think there's anything they can really do about it. Like, it, it just worked out for us this turn. So, okay, well, we got lucky. Infect mulliganed, and they only had one land. <clears throat> and they didn't even keep, like, a Glistener Elf in hand because they didn't play it in turn one. So, Tidebinder Mage is going to be very good here, uh, and Dismember is going to be very good. Problem spreading seas is actually fine because it turns off Ink Moth. Master Waves is very slow. Um, Mara Regery is actually pretty slow, but we want to keep the we want to keep the all the interaction. Yeah, I don't want to ever have to be taking Vial up to three, so you know what? I'm gonna take out Mara Regery. I think we want the spreading seas.
That's, that, that, that's got to be correct. Just because if they play like Ink Moth Nexus, we need to be able to turn that off. Or even turning off like Pendle Haven is usually worth it. This is fine. I'm, I'm good with this. Oh, you know what? I should have brought in a Deprive. Damn it. I t no, you probably take out... I didn't submit yet, did I? Okay, okay, yeah, no, we're, st we're still alive here. We'll take three spreading seas and cut, like, one Venthic Biomancer. Okay. We want the two Deprives. Okay, great. Uh, do -do -do. This hand is fine. We'll keep it. It has Trickster and Force. That's more than we can realistically hope for most of the time. Yeah, that's fine. Well, go Island, Aether Vial, and then we can hold up Trickster. Maybe try to kill this thing next turn. The worst thing for us is when they play Blighted Agent. We don't have a good way to deal with that. They might just get in for one Infect here. Um, do I really care about this? I don't think so. I'm not really relying on this vial right now. Oh, that's fantastic. So the only thing we have to be concerned is if, if we spreading seize this Ink Moth Nexus, this might be letting them cast Blighted Agent. But if they like if they don't have Blighted Agent, then this is actually fantastic for us. Play the island. There's like 0% that we're attacking with a Muta Vault next turn. Let's do this now. They can't protect it, so... Tidebinder's good. This way, if they go for Glessener Elf, we have an answer to it. So really, the only thing we're worried about right now is Blighted Agent. The mirror is annoying, but like... I think that we can potentially play past that. Okay. That's not good. Oh! Okay, so maybe this is like a mono green? Tidebinder is definitely going to go after this thing. They might have a protection spell in their hand, but... You know what, that's fine. If they have to they only have four cards left, so if we can make them waste one on Tidebinder, that's okay. And now especially because we have a second one. If they don't have one, then that's also fine. So we can Tidebinder, make them protect it this turn, and then try to force to keep ourselves alive next turn. And if, if they don't have a protection spell, they're gonna die, so they have to burn one now. Okay, pass. But then next turn we can just do the same thing. So we can use a force to, to not die to this thing next turn and then just tide binder again. <clears throat> Pendlehaven, yeah, that's okay. I still th we're probably. Yeah, we need to force this thing. Hitch Silvergill Adept. Hope they don't have Veil of Summer. So they don't have Veil. That's good. Just two cards left. Like, I, I think there's a very reasonable chance we can get there. It sort of sucks that we don't we're not gonna have you know, the ability to play two things next turn, but 
I don't think we can die from this attack. And they have to have another thing next turn. So just two. Alright. So how about now? Do you still have, do you have a second blossoming defense or vines? Because if you don't, like this might just kill you. Okay, they do have another one. They only have one card left though, so now we can potentially start racing them. I'm not really inclined to force very much. Like, unless... I don't know. What they have here? It could be, like, scale up. Listener Elf, I'm not worried about that. If they're only attacking for two a turn, that's fine. This Blight Mamba is not bad, though. For sure. I'm not going to block it. Yep. And take two. I think a land here would be pretty good. Okay. So, what do we do here? We could play Lord and then use the Trickster. No, all right, we can't. We can't do vote. We we can either we can attack with Muta Vault and then play one of these two things. I think I have Island, so I can kill them in two turns. So I think that that's what I need to do. I need to play Lord of Atlantis here, and then just burn the Force of Negation to anything that like kills us. So yeah, we we can attack for nine this turn and nine next turn. We're, we're still not dead, and if they only have one pump spell, we can beat that. There's a very um, off-the-beaten-path Infect deck. Like Most of them are not playing this card. I, that's pretty good if, like, you're, if you're going to play like a mono-color Infect. Like, that's certainly fair card to have in this list, so. They can only attack for three on board right now. Yeah, we win. There's nothing they can have in hand that we that is going to change the math on this. Them drawing a land means that we absolutely 1000% win this game. They can put us to seven, and then like we just counter any spell. Okay, well... Um, so if they have Dismember, does that matter? I don't think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're still dead. I guess if they have nature's claim, like they could, they could mount a comeback, possibly. Then they can actually block stuff. But I still don't think that's enough to really win this for them. I think they're just dead. Yeah, they're already at declare blockers, which means they lose. And now we have two pieces of interaction for even if they somehow survive this turn. But they're not going to. Okay, the game has ended. <laughs> Oops, Island Walk, yeah. <laughs> Alright.
So we're here two and two right now. We had a very close game versus Eldrazi Tron, and the the new Blinky deck was just insane. There was so much value in that deck, and that uh, Oath of Kai had just like got us both times. Like that would have been good if we had Force of Negation to hit it, but like they had mo he had multiple f like oaths both times, and which is even more impressive because like I said, he was playing you know the eighty card list, which means it should be less likely that you see like multiple of your four ofs, but when you're when it when you're good you're good I guess like but he also like has like t probably like tons of other useful stuff like the Sahili combo in that deck that works well with Felidar Guardian and who knows what other you know useful stuff but of course it has fucking Teferi in it like I hate that so much T fuck you Teferi <laughs> all right well uh yeah let's get into this so what do we got. It's been an interesting league so far. We are on the play versus Storm 2. Okay. Uh, this, this hand is okay. I think this is, yeah, we go... I think we, yeah, just... This is fine, like... Vile, we have Benthic Biomancer into Master of the Pearl Trident, and... Ideally, if we can draw, like, another blue source, then we can hard cast this Force of Negation. Okay, so it looks like this is probably Storm, which means Force is going to be very good. So maybe we don't play this Benthic Biomancer. That's tempting. So we, we might need it in order to, um, you know... The problem is, like, you can also gift some given on our turn, too. Um, yes. Okay, that's fine. Um, what do we do here? We can play Silvergill Adept, draw a card. I think no, probably... So do we play the Mutavault or the Cavern first? Like, what's more important? I think the Mutavault. I'll show him the Master. Give us an island or another blue card. Okay, that's fine. Now we can safely act, put the Benthic Biomancer in play. And next turn, if we draw island, that would be fantastic. It's been a while since I think since we played against Storm. Um, Baral is fine. We're gonna island walk right past it. Ooh, uh, that's actually tempting, because we can tap down the Baral with Merfolk Trickster. So. Or we could just go double Lords and then just try to hope that Trickster's going to be enough. So let's see. Hmm. Could attack with the Muta Vault. For, if we if we do that, that's eight damage. That's a two turn clock, right? We tricks. So let's see. If we put the Master of the Pearl Trident in play, which he knows about, and attack for five, submit fifteen, and trickster this thing down. And then even if we have to burn the Lord of Atlantis, then that's 3, 6, 9, 10, 11. It's not quite enough to kill him in two turns, though. So I guess we're, we're, we only lose to, like, what? No, but if we, like, trickster this thing down, what, the chances that we're going to need to use this Lord on this force are very low, I think. It's probably not going to be able to go for it that turn, so maybe this is still the correct thing to do. I mean, he doesn't have an island, though. That's actually worth noting. So you know what? 
So if I play Master and attack, like he might try to block one of these things. He might try to block something. Okay. That might be a way we can get him. So then if he blocks them, he can just violin the Lord and kill off the Baral. Blocking this Benthic Biomancer is going to look so tempting. Alright, yeah, so that's fine. So I think I'm just going to use this Trickster in his upkeep. And I think this should do it. So we'll have 3, 6, 9, 10, 11... Actually, this, if we draw a land, this could also do it too, even if we burn this, right? Because it'll be 3, 6, 9, 12. No, not quite enough. Damn it. Nope. Okay, so I get, yeah, if, if we. He might, if he has to pay mana or life for a mana, though, that could also change it. But I don't think he's going to go for it. I think he's just going to die. Plays another creature that could be a problem. Could have lightning bolts. Sometimes they do main deck those. Okay. So drawing an island would be. I don't, know if, I don't think the island matters much. Um. It sort of helps. He's going to have to do something now, because we are threatening to kill him. Well, we will be when we put this Lord in play, but surely he has to have something. Probably Bolt. Repeal. Interesting. Um... Guess that's okay. So the question is, do I actually put the Lord back in play or do I put the Silver Gill Adept in play? If I put the Lord back in play, that's 3, 6, 9, 10, 11. I don't know, that puts him at 4. He does draw a card. If we have a Force up. It might be better off like putting the Silver Gill Adept back in play, though. So we could draw another force of negation. And we or like even an island would be fine. Whereas like right now he's gonna take six seven, which means like he's still dead next turn, right? Yeah. So I think we'll just let him take this damage. Uh, you know what, that maybe I shouldn't be doing this now because if he plays like, or he could, he could go for value off of this. Uh, is there any value to holding on to this? I could want, I might want to adapt this at some point. I'm going to hold on to the vial. Alright, we got to hope that one force of negation is enough. So, Alright, they're going to go for something this turn. Yeah, they don't have a choice. They have to just, like, get there. For a blue instant card, okay. Gifts ungiven. Uh, yeah, I have to force the gifts ungiven. Right. So 
So this is the one he knows about. And if he remands it, we still have a second blue card to counter it again. Okay, well this is a good sign. Conceded. Alright, cool. We beat Storm game one. Game one's always the hardest one because we don't always have the forces in this match when we need them. Whereas like game two and three we can definitely mull it into them. So Damping Sphere for sure is fantastic against this deck. It, it's essentially anti-storm. Um, Deprive is very good. And Relic of Progenitus. Spreading Seas is not very good. Master Waves is pretty slow normally, so we're going to cut cards that's usually like 3 and 4 drops. Stuff like Silvergill is great. We want to keep Probably Brazen Borrower is... Ooh, that, that's actually rough. Maybe Brazen Borrower is a card that we could cut in this match. I'm just trying to think. Is Master of Waves better or worse than Brazen Borrower? Master of Waves is a way to win the game when they have, like, Anger of the Gods. Like, it can still survive that and... To, it, it works well with the Mutavolt on the field. Um, Brazen Borrower can sometimes tempo them out by bouncing the Hate Bears, but it's also vulnerable to Bolt and, like, empty. Uh, well, like, hmm, I don't know, it, it's really close. I think I'm going to cut the Brazen Borrowers and cut... Oh, but this is a thing that has Flash. You know what? Never mind. I think the Flash makes it worth more. We'll cut the Masters in one Borrower. There's also an argument that maybe one Regery, because this is actually a sorcery speed spell. Yeah, I, you know what? I like this better. Hidebinder Mange is like sort of okay. Maybe we want this just because just to be like faster than Regery. Now they might they might have like engineered explosives too. I don't know. This thing can only really tap Electromancer, and that's pretty much it. Alright, I'm going to keep it like this. Uh, this is normally a pretty good match for us, and like we have lots of good sideboard cards against them, so I have confidence that as long as our draws don't suck, that we can get there. So, the thing is, like against most decks, this would actually be pretty good, but we're, we are on the draw against a very fast combo deck, so I don't want to keep that hand. Whereas this, I think, is a little bit better. I'm willing to keep this. And... Uh, I guess I'm putting Cabinet of Souls in the bottom. I think... Th oh, this is, this is, or you know what? Maybe the Mutavault is not going to be likely to attack. We don't have a lot of creatures though, so we might need it. The thing is, if I keep Castle of Antris and Cavern of Soul, like, I really want to keep the Aether Vial so that way I, I want to I wanna have double blue up so I can hard cast stuff. But if I'm going to be holding up blue mana for Deprive, then maybe I'm not going to be able to like redeploy this. So yeah, I, I need to keep the Castle of Antris because of the Deprive, so it's a matter of either Cavern or Mutavault. Hmm, it's, it's it's really tough. So we're probably going to stick Vile on 2 and leave it there, so you know what, maybe Mutavault has some value, but... The problem is, like... You, okay, let's say that we draw another island. If We're, we're not going to be able to attack with the Mutavault anyway, because we need to hold up the Deprive. And if we don't attack with the Mutavault, that like 100% tells our opponent that we have a Counterspell in hand, so... You know I think for that reason, I'm going to put Mutavault in the bottom. 
We're, the only thing that sucks is like Castle of Antris comes into play tapped. If we draw an island, that would be great. Island is like the best possible draw for this turn. Because then it lets us curve Vile into Castle of Antris. Otherwise, we're potentially not going to have a counterspell until turn 3. They kept 7 cards in hand. Alright, beautiful. Because now we can play Benthic Biomancer and then either adapt it or flash in Trickster. Okay. So we might not even play this Cavern of Souls at all. It might get adapted away to Ben. You're going to play another Sleight of Hand or like a Serum Vision? No, Brawl. Brawl is usually the correct play. So we have to play Castle Vantress this turn. Beautiful. Okay. So they just play a bunch of cantrips. We can flash in Trickster. Otherwise, we're just slowly going to deploy stuff. Opt. Okay. If they're casting up, then it's probably safe for us to play the Trickster at the end step. Yeah, okay, so we can definitely put in Ben and Trickster, and then next turn put in Master. It's fine. Um, guess I would rather loot away the island at some point, so. He might have, like, Lightning Bolt. If he does, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. I mean it sort of sucks, but I can't I can't afford to protect that right now. There's way more important spells that this deprive has to be spent on. Next turn if we want, we can actually adapt the biomancer and still have deprive up. They're debating shock and okay, so they are gonna potentially go for it here. Okay. Metamorphose, sure, what are you doing here? Okay, you have three cards in hand. Alright, they, they might just go for like empty the warrants, that's possible. Past in flames. Um, countering this doesn't really do anything right now. Okay, sure, Past in Flames. That's not the important spell right now. Like, the problem, like, even if we... I don't know, it could be correct to, to counter it there, but they still had a card in hand, and I'm worried if they have, like, Gifts Ungiven or something. I don't know. We still have the option, if we need to, like, Force of Negate something, we could go for it with Benthic Biomancer. But I don't know what they have that they're doing right now. gifts I'm given. I think that's the one I want to counter. Okay, yeah. Um, sure, I can't, I can't pay two for that, so you have Spell Pierce. So that they had to, they probably had gifts as their last card in hand, 
and then they just drew the spell pierce off of the Metamorphos. So we're probably losing this game now. I mean, we're on the draw and we mulligan, so our hand was a little bit weak. Like if we had force there, that would have been, you know, probably. Yeah, if we if we could force it instead of um, deprive it, we could have. But you know, if well, I don't know. I guess it depends. If the island was a was a force instead, that would have worked. They have spell pierce. That's interesting. That's good to know. I guess if we counter the past in flames, it just lets them try to go for it again next turn. I don't know. Maybe that was Kurt. Maybe it would have been correct to counter past in flames. I guess what I was worried about is if I ca if I counter past in flames and then they have like I don't know if they had like gifts and given or something. Uh, you know I don't even want to do. I I believe that you can get there. <laughs> you have you going for grape shot like you have enough mana to do this. They still had a ton of mana floating, so I think they could have like gifts ungiven and like still found a way to like win that game. Um, yeah, there's nothing really I want to change. I don't think. At least they're they're very true to their name, so we just need to not have a terrible opening hand, and I think we'll be fine. This is a terrible opening hand. This is a very good opening hand. We're gonna keep this, and I guess Brazen Barber goes in the bottom. We'll play Silvergill Adept. Hopefully draw some more gas. It's not terrible. I guess I'll show... Lord of Atlantis seems like the most likely thing that we're going to play. Oh, that's... Okay, it's getting better. Our clock is getting quick. So next turn we can deploy two lords and still have Force of Negation up. So, you, like, the trick against storms, you have to have interaction, but you also have to kill them very quickly. And this turn, like, they, they don't have a turn two um, Baral this time, so they're a little bit slower than before. That's very good. Which means they probably have lightning bolt that they're sandbagging here for this lord that they know about. Drawing the island is also good because now we can pretend if yeah, as long as they don't combo off next turn, we can um just try to kill them. Or we can put the trickster in play. I'm gonna bolt. No, they go for opt. No, come on. It has to be lightning bolt, right? Yeah, okay. Okay, so you still take three damage. And now we can hard cast force on our turn. So shields are not going to go down. Fiery Islet. So I'm guessing this deck doesn't play fetch. Like they're playing like the version of the deck with that doesn't have fetches in it. So which I think is probably the better version of the storm deck. Hmm. I guess we'll play the island because then if we draw another land next turn, then let's hard cast force and play around force of negation. Or I'm sorry, um, play around uh, spell pierce. What are we gonna do here? Okay. You gonna go for gifts ungiven? Well, we're definitely going to counter that. Hmm. 
All right, so I guess they're going to go for some... Well, I guess this is just a cycle for them, right? So maybe they're just trying to find cards. I don't really have a whole lot. Okay, cycle for more. Like, I guess empty the warrens could also be possible here. Maybe grape shot for value. Yeah. Bolt, okay. Steam vents. So they only have three cards left. That's not... There, that's not bad for us. So we can violin this trickster. Really start to pressure them. So I think here we probably just want more creatures. That's actually pretty good. So let's hack first. Damping Sphere will make it extremely hard for them to combo off. And Spell Pierce is not enough to stop it because we have four lands. <laughs> Good try. <laughs> Yep. But now we are like extremely favored to win. They have three cards in hand and damping spears on the table. Electromancer does not do very much. We get an Island Walk Lord, we win. Okay, we just win. We get the concession. Look, uh, that looks like concede leg. Nope. Okay, we get to attack. Swim to victory, my children. All the way through their steam vents. There is no blocking. I have you have you have an island in play. Negative one. Here we go. Come on. Yes, there we go. Got it. <sighs> Damping Sphere just showed up at a really good time because there there was nothing they could really do about it. Like the spell pierce was not enough to stop it at that point. So um I think this list performed pretty well. You know, that the blinky deck was pretty insane. Like I don't know how we were supposed to defeat that. And on it, like Eldrazi Tron like goes back and forth. Like Sometimes, like, it feels like, oh, how do we lose this match? But then, like, a lot of times they just have draws that are like, how the fuck does anybody ever beat this deck? So we were very close against them, I think, and they just pulled it out. Like, if their draws were just, like, a little bit more clunky and ours were a little bit less clunky, like, it definitely could have changed that race, I think. So, like, I, I guess I'm not worried about those two matches too much, but... So we beat like the the black white stone blade or that no, was a, it was like a death shadow stone blade deck. Yeah, we beat that one. We beat the um, the looked like mono green infect, and then we beat storm. So I mean that's a pretty decent league, I'd say. Um, as far as this list, like I think this list performs like pretty well. We saw like once or twice where you know it was a little bit hard to cast our double blue stuff because we only have fifteen blue sources. So and. And Castle Ventures we saw was some was a little bit of a problem when we didn't have the islands. Like I said, you don't want to have too many of these, but you can't shave down too far in islands. Like for me personally, twelve is probably the minimum I'm going to play in order to play Castle Ventures in my deck. I really don't want to play less than this number with this. Um, but I think like even if you just play two of these, like you know, two and thirteen might be fine. So you only need this in a really late game scenario anyway, so it's 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 fine if you don't want to play all four of these. Just like a couple of them are sort of free, like I don't know. But the the more important thing is you can't like overload it on colorless mana sources. That's the thing. Like there is definitely a point where we had a very hard debate about when how are we gonna, you know, cast stuff like deprive or like force of negation if we want to pay mana for it. And yeah, when when you start going below, you know, like fifteen colored mana sources, it gets very hard. Like 
15 is actually kind of greedy. I think 16 is probably like the safe number, but I wanted the two Cavern of Souls just because I think there there's there's a fair number of counter spells going around. Like even the Storm deck sometimes plays stuff like Remand, which you don't really want to just let them remand your creature back. It's just such a tempo blow, especially when they have like a Baral. Like the worst thing for you that can happen is like they stick Baral. And then you go to like put a clock on the board and they just remand it back to your hand for one land to get to cycle into something like that puts them so far ahead and they get to draw a card off of it too it's insane so cavern can help fight against that that sort of nonsense a lot better i think any and we also saw against eldrazi tron he kept in chalice of the void i think in like the second game maybe like maybe that was the mistake like maybe we were supposed to counter the chalice but i don't know i guess i was kind of concerned like that if we counter the chalice, then we don't have like it turns off like a fair number of like the cards that are really good for us, like seize and um, petty theft. Because then, like at any point in the future, if bridge ever sticks, then we're not going to be able to deal with the bridge. That that's sort of the only like disadvantage. Like our bounce spells are always like two mana. Like whether it's echoing truth or this, like chalice on two always turns like the bounce spells off. So. That is one advantage of like playing something like Cryptic Command in the sideboard. It's a four mana spell, so like you don't ever have to worry about stuff like Chalice of the Void. But four mana is a lot, and especially like triple blue is also very hard in this deck. Like we could not play Cryptic with this mana base for sure. It's it is a card I very much considered to putting putting in the sideboard, but just uh, yeah, I, I think I preferred the mana base like this, so. Master of Waves like actually did some work today. We saw him win some games like people were not prepared for it. That's good. I think Master is going to do the best when people do not have lots of playing engineers in their deck. So like, the and I think what Shadow was probably the only list that we saw today that probably did have it and like they didn't even play it. So yeah, like Master he's 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 more vulnerable in 2020 than he ever was like in in previous years, but I think that he's flying enough under the radar, and he's there. There's enough red decks out there that it makes him worth playing at least a couple copies. I think I don't know if, if three felt like it was fine. We we might side him out a bunch, but even against like a deck like blue white control or like the bant control, if they like path master waves, like yeah, it's not great, but it's it's a, it's a very high variance card where if they don't have an answer to master waves, like. Master can just kill them, like, immediately just by putting, like, 10 power on the board at one time, so... It is a very much all-in card, and, like, it also incentivizes play along with stuff like Force of Negation, where you can tap out for Master, and then on their turn, if they, you know, play, like, say, Maelstrom Pulse, or, like, try to play, like, Liliana the Last Hope, or something, just cards like that, like, having Force to, you know, deal with those things is nice. Or, you know, like, it this protects you against stuff like Collective Brutality, it's it or what was I gonna say? Uh, like even it, I guess part of the part of the issue though was a lot of those decks you want to board out force of negations, but it helps in game one. So I, I guess it also helps. Like what was I gonna say? Uh, some of the decks are playing like supreme verdicts, which you know you can't really counter with the force, but. There are there are other things that like this deals with like uh, what was I gonna say like maybe engineered explosives or maybe even damnation if we see something like that like force can counter those cards it's just I'm trying to think of like cards that you know tapping out for master and then you know being able to protect it with force would be ma would matter so it have it sorcery speed answers basically that like kill this thing but I don't know there there definitely are things that like this is super relevant against. But I don't know. In general, like it's if they if they, it's a card that if they just usually can't answer it, then they're gonna die. And a lot like since since this card isn't really popular with our deck at the moment, a lot of people are probably just not gonna you know it, they're not gonna be prepared for master at the moment. So now the the only disadvantage is if we start playing more copies of master in our deck, then people are gonna start like you know. They're gonna like they, they. I don't know. Maybe they might pay attention to it. I, I don't know who pays attention to Marfolk, but it, it's possible. Like you know, maybe they're gonna look up lists. You know, in the middle of the match and be like, "Yeah, Master is something I should play around." So, who knows? But it it did some pretty good work today. I'm I'm happy that Master you know came through. So, uh, yeah, that's all I got for now. Um, yeah, I guess 
I will see you guys next time. Um, please, you know, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, your support means everything to me. I, I say that a lot, but like I mean it desperately every time. I really do. It, it it fills my heart with joy every time I see like people liking the videos and commenting on it. So the, I only do this because you guys like watching the the game plan here. So if there is something specific you want to see, then I, please let me know. I will see if it's something I can reasonably make happen. And if it is, then uh, you know everybody wins. So all right. Like I said, uh, I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.